As you can see, the work we're doing with nonprofits is really global in scope. But in addition to that global work, we recognize that we have a heightened responsibility to work with nonprofits here in the United States to provide help and financial support to nonprofits that are led by people of color and serve communities of color. That's what we're doing. We're dedicating $5 million of our $20 million total of cash grants to provide assistance to these groups. We base this in part on not just what we're all thinking about and reading about and seeing in the news, but by what data is telling us as well. What we've seen this year is that job losses in the United States have been hitting the hardest, in so many ways, the people who can bear it the least. We're seeing higher job losses for people with lower income. We're seeing higher unemployment rates for people of color. And we're seeing the same phenomenon with respect to women, as more women have been losing their jobs than men. So we feel we have a special responsibility to serve women of color, to serve people of color. We'll couple that work with nonprofits with current and future committed long-term efforts to use our voice as a company on public policy issues. And we're prioritizing three issues in particular. This has to start, we think, with new government support and more governmental innovation to invest in individuals, to create more skilling opportunities for individuals. It then should be coupled, in our view, with new government incentives for employers, especially as governments consider stimulus packages. This is the time when governments can change that trajectory that we've been living with for 20 years by providing employers with tax credits and other financial incentives to enable employers perhaps most especially small employers, small businesses, so they too can invest in the training and new opportunities for their people. And finally, there is an opportunity for governments to put data and innovation to work by opening up public data sets and to innovate in government workforce training and the like. In all of these ways, Governments have such an important role to play in building a better future. And that brings us back to what we'll do as well. We see ongoing technology innovation as playing a fundamental role, not just this year, but every year in the decade ahead to support every part of what nonprofits, governments, employers, and individuals all need to do. That's why we're taking a page out of what has worked well for us in the sustainability space. We're focused in 2020 on three skilling sprints. The first of these is what we're launching today. It will be followed by a second that will launch this fall, a sprint that is focused on providing new technology and tools to employers. And that in turn will be followed by a third, a third sprint that will focus on what we're doing for students. But let me give you a bit of a sneak preview of what you'll see more this fall. The new technology and teams that we're going to make available to employers around the world. Let me invite Charlotte Yarconi from Microsoft, the corporate vice president who's leading this work. Charlotte? 